as you can see, we've got the Yahoo Finance here. Uh, I'm going to pull some data real quick for a mock portfolio. So uh, I already have some companies pulled. I'll show you what I did. But I want to pull S&P 500 data. So here's S&P 500. Uh, I want to go to historic data. And I need three years and plus one month. So I need 37 months of monthly data. So I'm going to go back to uh, 10. 1 2014 through 10 and I don't know why they make me do this but actually it's 02 of the current year will get me you know, what I want here so then I apply that and you'll see that'll go up through oh I don't want daily I want month there we go okay so since it's always on the first the monthly data reporting that it's going to through October 1st of 2017 Back to October 1st of 14. I'm going to download all of that. So open that up. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete everything except it just close. And like I said, I already have. Um, I'm going to change this to S and P 100. Uh, I already have uh, Yum, Clorox, and Amazon. Uh, if you're not familiar with Yum, that's. Uh, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, KFC. I'm going to move all these. So I right click, move or copy. And I want them all to go over to this file. Okay. So now it gets added next to SP 500. And then I'm going to do Clorox, move, copy, drop it in here. Okay. And then uh, yum. Right click, move or copy. Goes over here. And now they're all in one sheet. So I'm going to create a portfolio and I'm going to calculate uh, standard deviation and beta of those portfolios and talk about diversification. So uh, I'm just going to move them all over here to S&P 500. Uh, so this is S&P returns. Uh, and again, returns are equals. This one divided by a previous minus one, so that gives the percent return from uh, October 1st to November 1st here. Just gonna double click that down, uh, and then we'll be able to copy and paste that over to everybody else. So I'm gonna take, uh, this is Amazon. And should be able to just copy that and put it right here. And I'll have uh, the next one, let's see, Clorox, CLX, copy that, paste it here, yum, copy that, paste it here, and then I want Returns, returns, returns. So if I just grab this and copy it and move over to and paste, over to paste, over to paste. All right, then I'm going to have, uh, let's see, uh, weights. So I need a weight in my portfolio for Amazon, for Clorox, for Yum. Let's say we do uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, something like that. So as long as they add up to 100%, right, um, those are weights. If you'd rather have a percent format, that's fine as well. It doesn't really matter. Uh, now we just need to create the portfolio. All right, so we're actually going to insert, um, oh, nope, not there. Control-Z, Control-Z. Uh, we're going to insert another spot here for each of them. So we're going to put their value in the portfolio here. And so the portfolio, again, we you know, when we do mock portfolios, we just do it on a dollar and then you run the returns up and then if you want to multiply that at the end by any dollar amount, you can, you know, start at anything. Uh, from that base of a dollar. So uh, all we need is then if the portfolio is a dollar, 
um, then the value of yum is just that dollar times uh, its weight here. Value of Clorox, same thing. Portfolio is a dollar times its weight, and then equals dollar times Amazon's weight. And then we just uh, run these up. So uh, value of Amazon when the portfolio started times one plus the first return value. Okay. And you just double click that down and it'll keep, you know, it goes up. When it goes up, it goes down. It knocks some of the value off. So we went from 30 cents to 33 cents down to 30 cents, etc. And then you should just be able to copy that. Paste. Paste. Okay. And then the portfolio value, right, is just a sum of the three components. So if yum is worth that plus uh, CLX is worth that plus Amazon is worth that, and then the first month there went from a dollar to about a dollar seven. Okay, and it'll just keep summing them up as they go up. So there's our portfolio value. It's worth about a dollar ninety-seven by the end. So over the three years, it went up. It basically doubled in value, or almost. Okay. Uh, and then we can calculate returns of our portfolio. Right, so I'm going to do copy and paste. There are portfolio returns um, like that. And now we can look at the portfolio and calculate its beta and see how it behaves. And we're going to need betas and stuff for all these others too. Um, so let's go get uh, standard deviation. Uh, oh, I'm going to do global one. standard deviation. So this will be on S and P returns. Let's go ahead and view. I'm just painting these freestyle for us so we can make sure we're in the right spot. Okay, so here's S and P returns. Standard deviation of S and P returns like that. Okay, and then if we want standard deviation of returns for all of them, right? We can just copy this, paste. Let me do a little more. Paste. 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 Okay. We also need for uh, the non SP stuff, we need the correlation with the market. So, Corel um, of the returns of Amazon with the market. Oh, that didn't work. That one. Oh, I put it in the wrong spot. Just a second. Nope. There we go. Correlation. So we equals Corel of the returns of Amazon. Just highlight them all, comma. Returns for SP 500. Okay. We have that. And then we need beta. Uh, and beta is going to equal the correlation times the standard deviation of the investment divided by uh, the standard deviation of the market. Alright. So you get the beta there. And then again, we can just copy these over uh, if we lock we lock the right thing. So I need E40 to be locked. No, C40 to be locked because we always want to re reference back to C, but we want the leaves to move. And then in my correlation, I need to keep the C's locked because we want them to always correlate with the mark. So the rest of it should be able to copy, paste, copy, paste, paste, paste. All right. So beta of Clorox, it has it about 0.21. Let's make sure that worked right. CLX will never be perfect again, so it's fine. Uh, but if we go to Clorox and we go to summary, the beta of Clorox is 0.23, so we're real close. Beta of yum. Let's see what the beta of yum is. It's about 0.66. I'm getting 0.67, so we're pretty close. Mm -hmm. And then what we want to look at is the portfolio here, right? Uh, and so the main thing is here right at the end is I just want to show like how diversification works. So this portfolio has three different companies in it instead of one. If you do the weighted average of the betas here. So we have three betas, um, one, two, three of the different companies. Then uh, average beta 
equals uh, the beta of Amazon times, again, the weight plus beta of Clorox times its weight plus beta of yum times its weight. And again, now if we mess with the weights, we can create different portfolios and see how it behaves. But the average beta of those three is 0.695. The beta of the portfolio itself is actually about 0.78, so it's a little bit higher than the average beta as we expect these, especially as you add more things to go uh, to converge. That the the weighted average of the constituent betas will about equal the portfolio beta, and in this case, we're off by um, about 11 percent, uh, give or take, so 10.8 percent. Um, versus the average standard deviation uh, and here's where diversification comes in so again we want uh, where are the weights t2 t3 t4 so t2 3 4 so standard deviation times t2 plus standard deviation times t3 plus Standard deviation times T4 and you get a standard deviation of 0 0.056 versus the portfolio standard deviation which is quite a bit lower than that. Um, let's see how much lower we're talking. So it's about 45% lower. So we've, we've cut out almost half the standard deviation. So um, so that is why we like portfolios, right? The, the volatility of the portfolio is significantly less than the average volatility of the things in the portfolio, and that's what we mean by diversification. But anyway, that's how you build a little um, mock portfolio and you kind of look for standard deviation. Cancel, don't do that.